Hermagird, C++. Let's get to work. What's up, people? Mr. Toolbox back with another Amazon Lumberyard video. Today we're going to start going down the rabbit hole that is C++. Not to worry though, we're going to start out simple. Today we'll just create a project in the project configurator. We'll jump into Visual Studio. We'll get a sense for how it's laid out, where we find our new uh, game project there. Then we'll add a couple files, a C++ file, a header file. We'll change a couple lines of code and in the end we'll have created an empty component in the component palette. As you'd expect, an empty component won't do us much good in the editor proper, but I think it'll serve as a good entry point to kind of show us how the project's laid out in Visual Studio, get us used to adding code, things like that. We'll build on it from there. So let's start with the usual song and dance. I've got the project configurator popped open. I'm gonna go ahead and click Create New. We'll call this Empty Component Test. Click Create Project. We'll see that pop in. Now we won't need any special gems for this, so I'll just give a click. Make sure we click Set as Default. That's important for the next step. Once that's done, we can close the Project Configurator. Next, pop open an administrative command prompt, and then we're gonna to navigate to our Lumberyard install. So mine is in Program Files, Lumberyard, 1.8, and then into the dev directory. Hit enter, we should be there. What we want to do next is run lumberwaf.bat configure. Go ahead, press enter. It'll take a little bit of time. I'll meet you back when it's done. Once that finishes up, you should see a line that says finish successfully. You can go ahead and close up the administrative command prompt. Then we are going to pop open Windows Explorer. As you see, I am in my Lumberyard 1.8 dev directory right now. What we want to do is navigate into the solutions directory. And then what we're looking for, let's expand this out just a little bit, is the Microsoft Visual Studio solution. Mine's called Lumberyard SDK underscore VC120. If you're running Visual Studio 2015, you'll probably see VC140 instead. So let's go ahead and double click that. It'll open it up in your Visual Studio. I'll let that load up. As you can probably tell already, this is a pretty dense solution. There's 105 projects in here. You can expand any one of these folders, take a look at what's inside. I encourage you to do that. You can have access to all the engine's code in here. It's pretty cool stuff. What we're interested in right now, however, is under the game folder, you'll find the name of the project we just created. That will show up as long as you remember to click Set as Default in the Project Configurator. If we expand that out, we'll see a project of the same name under that, which we can then expand and see the components in there. What I want to do next is add some content. So what I'm going to do is right click on the project, come down to Add, and then click New Item. See the Add New Item dialog pop into place, Visual C++, and we'll have two options here, C++ file or a header file. We'll start with the header file. We'll give it a name. I'm going to call this empty component.h. And then for location, go ahead and click Browse. Go ahead and find your Lumberyard install. You'll probably be there by default. And once you're in Dev, go ahead and open up the code directory. Find your project. Mine's called Empty Component Test. Head into Game. And then I'm going to make a new directory here. So I'll right click, come down to New. Click Folder, and I'll call this Components. Once that's there, we'll go ahead and click Select Folder. Everything lined up here in this dialog, we'll click Add. Once we've got that done, Visual Studio is going to open that file for us. So you'll see here, we've got a blank file, EmptyComponent.h. Now I'm going to paste some code in. I'll include a zip file, a link to a zip file 
uh, on the overlay here. This is just the header file, so it's just declaring our empty component class as a child of the AZ Frameworks component. A uh, couple public forward definitions for some functions we'll need to override, and then one private variable, which is this m underscore sum property. We'll see that in action in a few minutes. Once that's in place, we can go ahead and save it. So I'll just press Control S. And we can, with the header file in place, let's find the core filter here. Expand that out. You're going to find your project name game.cpp. So mine reads empty component test game.cpp. Let's open that up. It's going to have a bunch of stuff in it. We need to add just a couple of lines. First two are just going to be more includes. So right under the include block, hit enter. We're going to paste these two in. It's the component application bus header file and the header file we just created. Once those are pasted in, we got to scroll down a bit and we'll find the complete init function and we need to add one line there as well. I'll include this file in the zip file. I'll throw the overlay up one more time with the link to the zip. So we'll add that in and we should be good to move on to the C++ file. So same deal here. We're going to come back over to our project. We'll right click, come down to add, click new item. You'll see the location's already what we want it to be. So let's click C++ up here in the main nav. And then we'll name this, as you'd expect, empty component dot cpp. Everything looks in line. Go ahead and click add. Same deal. Visual Studio is going to pop it up for us, an empty file. Now we can fill it in. So just like before, I'm going to paste some code in here. It'll be included in the zip on the overlay. We've got our basic includes up at the top. We've also got a couple things I want to call out right now that we'll see in the editor in just a bit, namely some category name as an attribute on our component and some property. We'll see both of those in action in the editor. We've also got a couple empty definitions for those functions that we forward declared in the header file. So let's go ahead and save that. We've got one more edit to make. The build system needs to know to include these files when we go to compile our game. And to do that, we're going to jump into the underscore WAF directory and open up the game.waf files file. See here, we've got definitions for core stuff, game stuff, system stuff. What I want to do is, let's say right under core, add a new line and tell it about the components we've just created. I won't include this one in the zip. You should be able to edit it on your own. What I will do is place a link on the overlay to the Amazon Game Dev Forums post that I took this from. It was an exchange between Pet Rocket, um, Binky, and a user named Herpaderp. They worked all this out. I'm just kind of putting a video out on it because I think it kind of lets us navigate the project and solution in a pretty good way to start us out on our path on C++. So like I said, I'll throw the overlay uh, with a link to that discussion so you can see this. The code's all in there. It's a little bit fragmented because it changed from release to release, which is why I want to bundle the C++ and the H file and put those out on a link. But this game WAF files is a pretty minor edit. It's been up here for long enough. You should have been able to copy it down by now, or you can just give a pause, copy it down, and you'll be good to go. Once we've got all that in there, go ahead and save this file as well. That ends our excursion into Visual Studio, so we can close it up. It's going to ask if we want to save some changes. Sure. Yes, I do. Back in the administrative command prompt, what we need to do next is build our project. So again, we'll use lumberwaf.bat. This time it's going to be build win x64 VS 2013 profile. If you're using VS 2015, substitute it in there. I'll do a p dash all for myself, and then I'll press enter. This is going to take a while to finish. I'll meet you back when we're done. All 
All right, there she blows. Let's go ahead and create a new level right quick. So I'll click new level. Let's call it level one. All the rest default is fine. Going to prepare that. We'll leave the texture dimensions where they are as well. All right, that's loaded up. Get that debug info out of the way and let's find out what we've just done. So let's pop open tools in the menu, come down to other and find the component palette. Give that a click. You'll see down in the bottom left hand corner, we've got categories. You may see something already. It's that some category name I pointed out earlier. Give that a click. You'll see we've got our empty component there. That's pretty neat. Let's close that up though. We'll drop a new component entity into the scene. And if you click add component over here, you'll see the same deal. We've got some category name, we have our empty component there. You can then attach that to any component entity and you'll see something else. That some property, that's that string uh, variable that we set in the C++ file. So we can name that anything we want. And that string is a property of our component. So that's all I've got this time. This was a pretty quick video and I wanted it to serve as sort of an introduction to where we find the solution, how we go about configuring, building, setting the project, things like that. How we add header files, C++ files to our solution. You know, the intro, the basic stuff. The code for this section wasn't that important. Why I didn't really spend a whole lot of time going over it. I'll throw that annotation on screen one more time with the link to the a uh, zip file that will contain the C++ file and header file for the empty component as well as the empty component test game.cpp file so you can find the includes and the on and it stuff in there. Also throw a link on the bottom of the video here to the Amazon Game Dev Forum discussion around this empty component stuff. It's worth a look. I really just wanted to put a video out kind of introducing the concepts and I thought that was a good way to show it off. As always, do not forget to like, subscribe, uh, say a few Hail Marys, all that sort of thing. Uh, also, don't forget to join the Amazon Lumberyard community Slack. We've been having some good discussion on C++ in there, getting the ball rolling as far as writing code, diving into gems, things like that. It's a fun place to be. If you've got any feedback, good, bad, or otherwise, drop it down in the comments below or jump into Slack. Let me know there. I have been Mr. Toolbox, and this has been Amazon Lumberyard, our intro to C++. Bye.